the lengths we go through to get content. Welcome to another video. And before I tell you what's wrong with Hyperion, we're currently walking down Monk's Walk. I've never actually walked down here in my entire life. This is a first for me, as we're going to be gazing upon Hyperion with our own eyes for the first ever time. You excited, Chris? I'm very excited. We're following in the footsteps of giants, such as Dominic Gardner, who has been tirelessly coming down this very path each and every single day to bring construction updates. I feel like I'm on Emmerdale. Do, 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 do. I see rides. Like a boat graveyard. Rest in peace. Having a right nosy today. Part of the Big Easy Boulevard revamp. And if you look right in the distance, you can just about see a fresh lick of paint on that building. <laughs> and that's part of a uh, stealth getting a little bit of a little bit of a paint, a bit of a revamp, new posters. New painting, a little bit of sparkle. And Detonator's gonna get a nice new revamp as well as part of the Big Easy Boulevard. I'm looking forward to that. I think that's gonna be something quite special. I wish they'd get rid of that. That'll be disappearing at the end of 2024. Has been confirmed, Colossus is having some sparkle projects. And here is the shed. But we've walked all this distance to come and see this big, beautiful black shed. That is absolutely massive. So the main station building that you can see there is going to be themed on the inside but not so themed on the outside. That lift hill is going up at a rapid rate, an absolute rapid rate, and it will not be long until Hyperia has track completion which is crazy. The fact that it's it's real, it'll be complete. It's something for people to go and see when the park opens with a realistic opening date of maybe late April, May time, I would say. Maybe, but I'm just guessing. It makes Saul look like a baby. That outer bank element is going to be something like no other. You'll be strapped in by the waist on your lap bar, going around that outer bank. Wow. I think if you have the impression that Nemesis Reborn's the most exciting ride to uh, come to the UK theme park landscape this season, I definitely suggest coming on down and, and taking a look at that before you make your mind up, because there's someone who will always say that Nemesis is his number one coaster. Even I'm starting to doubt myself and uh, shine away from nostalgia and gain to terms that Thorpe Park may just take the crown for this one, for the UK's best coaster in my eyes. It's crazy. It's crazy that the UK is getting something on this magnitude, on this scale. Um, something that will appeal to a European market. Something that will drive people to come to the UK to experience just this. Mac Rides have built something special here and I cannot wait. I cannot wait. I can't wait. Bring it on, <laughs> April, May, whatever it opens. So after a few minutes of geeking out over the new ride, you clicked on this video to find out what's wrong with Hyperia. Let me just turn the camera around and uh, show you one of the two things that's wrong with Hyperia. So first and foremost, what I will say is that the station building is quite small in size. Yes, it will be themed uh, to a degree. It has been confirmed on the inside of the building, but as far as the outside is concerned, I don't think it's gonna be too drastic. I'm sure we're gonna see a Hyperia logo of some sort, maybe the wings in terms of a theming accent, but certainly nothing in terms of detailed theming pieces that we know of at this stage. But in terms of the station building, that is very, very small. Someone said it was gonna be the same size as the 13 station. It looks even smaller. It does. 
Number two is a much more bigger problem, which spreads out onto something I've lightly touched on very briefly. And it all starts with this building right here. From the station building to the maintenance building. Just take a look at what's on the front of the maintenance building. And I'll insert a photo here. Now for me, writing fearless on the front of a shipping container is probably not the best idea in terms of immersive theming. It looks a bit cheap and nasty, like a dark field shipping container experience. I'm gonna say they're not gonna finish it. I think they're gonna have the whole slogan on there, potentially. Maybe you have to find your before you or find the Or could that field. be on the station building? They Maybe put, they couldn't fit the whole slogan. If on you the put find your on the station building and then feel us on that, I'll be bitterly, bitterly disappointed. <laughs> now, the reason I have such an issue with it is because of marketing on a world stage. You're building the UK's tallest roller coaster. Merlin have plumped loads of money into attractions all around the world. And you've got the biggest draw to come to this country since the Smiley, let's say, for argument's sake. Yeah. That's probably the last ride that I can think of that was on a world stage. Yeah. It's got 14 loops, it hasn't been topped since. You've got the UK draw right there. And instead of opting for theming, themed around the mythology uh, of Hyperia and that, that Greek and goddess angle that they could have gone with the theming. Instead, they've gone with more stylized theming similar to Icon at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, which is basically a cop out for, we don't want to spend too much on theming. Let's have a shipping container building with a few accents that make it look stylized. Now, the one saving grace for Hyperia would be to have a themed train a beautifully themed train, golden accents, maybe the wings on the front of Hyperia, something that really stands out. Something with that Mac class and that Mac efficiency that just looks the part. So when it's going around, you're like, okay, that's pretty stunning. You're gonna board that. Similar to Voltron, how you look at that train and you're like, oh my God. But the thing that defines or compares Europa Park to Merlin property is that Voltron has a nice station building, a beautiful queue line, a themed queue line in a new themed area, along with these beautiful trains with these upholstered leather styled seats. No matter what the Hyperia train looks like, that building will not be themed much more than what you're seeing today. The only thing I'm gonna say here at this point is, okay, so the outside may look basic, but it's what's inside that counts. We don't know what's inside yet, but with a station building that small, how much could they actually do? Icon's a decent station. But there's no theming. Still a decent station. It has a cool. But there's um, no theming. It has, it has a cool station. I'm sorry, it's very modern. It, it's very modern, but it's also a cop out for having no theming. Icon, <laughs> to my knowledge, is based on like a sea snake creature of Japanese mythology. Yes, there's none, there's none of that. There is thinking. none of that other than having the snake decals on the train. There is no hint, wink or nod of this mythology, this Japanese mythology. And that makes me worried about this. They could have had a deal with Mac Rides where the Europa Park team come over and theme this to the high heavens. You are investing in something that's gonna stand out on a European stage, not just a UK stage. And Merlin are doing some incredible work around the globe with investing in their property. I just feel as though that theming wise is what's wrong with Hyperion. It doesn't matter about the length of the ride. For me, that's rewridability. You want that short experience that leaves you wanting more. Um, I think the elements alone and the experiences that you're going to get on the ride are going to be far exceeding anything else in the country. It's going to be everybody's number one the second it opens. Oh, and I just think they just could have gone the extra mile. I just think that immersion into the story is something that's very lacking in terms of Merlin. I think every time they invest in, that money is spread thin across the parks to the point where they'll never compete with Europa Park theme and they'll never compete with Fantasialand. There's, they've got that independent park spirit where they can lovingly invest in their rides and attractions and theming, whereas Merlin is very much a portfolio of parks they have to invest in, which unfortunately means there's a lot of cutbacks in terms of the things that are quite important that fans do appreciate and general public as well. We are all different. I will take the ride over much theming. So that's just me. Sean's yeah. different. We're all different. But let us know down in the comments down below what everybody else thinks. That is very true. If you say, Sean, shut up, you're talking shit, I completely understand. <laughs> At the moment, that station looks too modern to be a reflection of mythology. So, at the moment, at the moment. But with that said, it's been a lovely day, <laughs> month's walk. <laughs> I'm going to have a strepsil. I've got that out of my system. 
and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, and subscribe to Adventure Times as well. Thank you. Bye.